hey loved ones what's going on i'm gonna take these off because this blue light is trying to create weirdness with my eyes and glasses so hey y'all how are you doing i hope you all are doing amazing i hope everything's going well on your side of the camera everything's going great on mine um welcome to 2024 oh woo, woo, woo. so glad that we made it over a lot of people did not and i'm just grateful to the lord that you made it over um to watch this video and that you just made it over in general um i made a lot of goals start uh ending 2023 baby i'm just learning that you know the lord had his own plans and he has his own plans and everything that i had wrote written in my goals it's just it's just not going it's just not coming but it's fine so that's why i'm gonna eventually do a prayer board because i need to see what the lord has going on like my thing this year for 2024 is to see what the lord has in store i was saying 2024 um expect more which is still great but i'm still gonna consult the lord about what he's wanting in this season of my life okay because ain't nobody trying to get their feelings hurt um so but do what you will with your vision boards y'all do what you will i'm just not in that space right now so but i'm so grateful to god that you all have joined me on today today we're talking about fasting Woo! that's what everybody talks about in january all the church is going fast you got your little prayer group going on fast fasting is the biggest thing in january starting of the year people are trying to hear what the lord is saying um and i think that's a great thing i think that's wonderful to do because the lord is ultimately in control of our lives especially if we make the lord lord of our lives um so today i am so grateful to bring this topic to you it's something i stumbled through on 2023 i was trying to fast i fast i made it i made it through quite a few successful fasts um i definitely prayed about that being a part of one of my things that i did with the lord last year um, i prayed about that in january and that definitely came to fruition through the throughout the year so i was able to learn about fasting i was able to complete fast i was able to just fast in general there was a point in time where i could not fast i just i'm like lord what is going on why can't i fast why can't i just i just can't finish it i just have so many things and the ultimate thing that came for me specifically that i was making my belly uh my god lowercase g like i was literally wanted going to food for everything that i should have been going to god for and when i was fasting i just succumbed to everything that the enemy was throwing at me and so on and so forth so fasting was something i really struggled and stumbled through last year but this year i am going with a new pair of glasses i've definitely taken time to study it to um see like the scientific benefits the things for our bodies and all of those things and i've also read books about it um one of the books i read is um the power of prayer and fasting by what's that man name ronnie floyd that is a really great book you guys should definitely look into it it definitely talks about how biblical fasting works um and just how it can work to better your life and your walk with the lord so i definitely encourage you all to read it um there's another book i'm currently reading right now it's called help lord the devil wants me fat baby what this book is literally amazing it is changing my life and it is showing me why the lord literally set me apart to bring him in to my weight loss journey to my relationship with food food addiction all of those things it's literally showing me that i'm not alone on this journey that several people the lord has called several people out of it through him have called several people out of gluttony have called several people out of um just sinfulness with um food um and of course doing the exchange of making um the lord actually lord over our lives versus food and all other substances and stuff like that so i definitely encourage you to read that as well i'll have that listed in the description the author of that book i don't have it in front of me right now but that is one book you guys need to check out it is really great but um let's get on into the video let's get on into what this fasting thing is all about okay
So y'all know how I am about my definitions. Baby sis needs to understand what is what. I was telling my friend Sylvia the other day, Googling and the Bible, baby. We just we just gonna use the two and then we're gonna come to the Lord and say, hey, what does this mean? Where is this at? How we get there? Okay. But um, Oxford languages, which is what you'll find when you actually uh, Google on Google definitions, it says fasting, um, abstaining from all or some kind of food or drink, especially for religious um, observances. So um, this is basically saying you're taking a period of time to abstain from food or drink um, or some kind of food for a period of time for religious things. Um, Ronnie Floyd in his book, he basically says, is defined as abstaining from food with a spiritual goal in mind. So both of them kinda are the same. One of them is a little bit more, you know, spirit led about like actually abstaining from food with a spiritual goal in mind. That's totally different than just abstaining from food for religious observances. Um, but, Today, I'm going to talk about a little bit of what fasting is, the different types of fast, um, how it benefits our body, what the Lord is saying, some scripture, some scriptures, because we got to bring the scriptures up in here because ain't nobody trying to lead nobody astray. I am not a licensed dietitian. I am not a licensed nutritionist. I am not um, a preacher. I'm not a pastor. Baby, this is stuff that I have gathered from my readings studyings learnings um so if you don't agree with all of this if you don't even want to take what i'm saying baby that's between you and you okay just take what you will and you know do move it move however the lord leads you uh-huh amen all right so Basically, um, I want to just list out the different types of fast that I came across. So intermittent fasting, that's like you do like a 6 to 6, um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. where you're taking a period of time where you're not eating. A lot of people are doing like um, this for weight loss. People are doing this to like help their bodies. Um, a lot of people that have PCOS are doing it to help with like insulin resistance and all that type of stuff. Um and it's great. It's something great that you can definitely do, but it is not spirit led. It is more so like a, I'm trying to lose weight. So let's try this. Let's figure this out. So that's intermittent fasting. Um, then you have only eating like fish, veggies, um, and no sweets. So that's, that's more of like a dietary type thing. That's kind of like the thing with the Daniel fasting. That's more of a concentration, concentration, rather concentration. Jesus Christ, help us Lord. Consecration rather than actual fasting. Um, fasting, as we just read, it is definitely the absence of food or drink for a period of time. Um, so that's that. Um, then you have one meal a day where you fast all day and you eat one meal. That's what you want to do. That's what you do. Um, it's all about your intention while you're fasting that makes a difference between you know, weight loss fasting or just health fasting rather than spiritual fasting. It's all about your intention and what you're doing um, during your fast. Um, then you have, of course, water fasting. A lot of Christians do this when they're trying to spend time with the Lord. They're trying to hear what the Lord is saying. They're trying to really dig deep in. So they fast from food. Um, I know one one of my friends, she fasts from everything. She fasts from... Um, she. She keeps water, but she fasts from social media. She fasts from, um, TV. Sorry, the two minutes. She fasts from TV. Um, anything that is not of the Lord, like not, not, I'm not saying TV is not of the Lord, but anything that is going to cause her distraction, anything that would normally distract her on any given day, she's taking up time away from that so she can really focus on the Lord. Um, so that's, that's one way of doing it. But I do want to say that Daniel fasting, it is more of a consecration and not really a fast. I definitely want to make sure I point that out. Um, any of these fasts are fine, uh, to do long as you're omitting, um, food, you know, um, future Kyra editing here. I did also want to say dry fasting is something that you can do as well. Um, 
So I forgot to put that in there. So that's without water or food. Um, it is something that I'm learning that is challenging if you have some type of food addiction. Um, if you have something where you feel like you have to have food, um, it is a challenge fasting. It is. I'm not going to lie to you. It's really a, a challenge. Um, but it is something that when you add the prayer into it, which is the spiritual side of fasting, that the Lord actually helps you with. He gives you strategy. He gives you peace. He fills you up. Like this scripture that says, a uh, man should not live on bread alone, but of the word of God. Um, so I paraphrase to praise that, but you know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, when you're adding prayer into these fasts, these water fasts, these one meal a days, these, uh, six to six, all of those different fasts that you're doing, you're literally spiritually fasting. So you're doing exactly what Ronnie Floyd said about, um, fast abstaining from food with a spiritual goal in mind. So, it is something that is doable. I'm not going to say that you can't do it. I'm not going to say that it's impossible to do, but it's something that you can do. If you really uh, have a spiritual goal in mind, the Lord definitely wants you to get closer with him. He wants you to hear what he's saying. He wants you to um, acknowledge him so that he can direct your path. He wants these things from us. So definitely spiritually, spiritual fasting is something that um, is a great tool for us to use as Christians to really get the strategy that the Lord wants us to have for this year. And just in general, it doesn't always have to be in January either, you all. We can fast anytime. Um, I'll talk later. The Holy Spirit wants, sometimes the Holy Spirit prompts us to fast and we don't know why we're fasting. We never know. We can fast on other people's behalf as well. Um, there are so many different things that fasting does for us. It's literally... Um, I think my, my dad just said this. It's literally sacrificing one of our needs to see, to get something that we need from the Lord. So it is just kind of a transfer of needs. It's really just us humbling ourselves before the Lord and really seeking his face about what he needs for our lives, what he wants for our lives and all of those things. Um, so how long can a fast be? A fast can be from 6 to 6 p.m. It can be um, 24 hours. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be three days. It can be three days. It doesn't have to be, but it can. It can be a week. It can be 10 days. A lot of um, people that I've looked into as far as like um, health benefits, a lot of people fast for like 10 weeks. The Not 10 weeks. <laughs> 10 days people fast for like 10 days to get rid of food addictions and really see how the lord would like them to eat or really just kind of start their palate over um it kind of helps get rid of cravings and all of those things i'll definitely link the video in the description of the person that talks a little bit about that he's a doctor that i watch all the time he's really great i can't pronounce his name which is why i'm not trying to say it but he's really great and i think that you will all uh, find him super interesting because he gives a lot of that um health benefits side of fasting like the lord is so cool he's so amazing that he created our bodies to heal themselves to protect themselves from things to um repair themselves and one way that he does that is through fasting um but it says here the longest known fast was in 1971 when a 27 year old man survived on water and supplements for 382 days um and he shrank from 456 pounds to two to 180 pounds baby i'm not telling you to do that okay that is not what i'm saying but it can be done and this wasn't even with prayer this is just somebody that's fasting so um just think about that this year. Think about how you can really submit yourself unto the Lord. You can humble yourself unto the Lord through fasting to see what the plans he actually has for your life. I'm not saying that you can't get that through prayer. You definitely can just get that straight through prayer. But something about fasting removes your craving for food, removes the things that, you know, it just removes something. So that the Lord can fully embrace you. That you can really be filled up by the Lord. Like he literally is our bread of life. 
he fills us up. Think about how bread does in the stomach. It feels like it soaks up. It absorbs. So us not eating, the Lord literally is our bread of life. He is literally giving us the nourishment that we need. You know, think about how good a good juicy burger is or a good, you know, um, chicken and waffles is. Think about how good that tastes to you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is also good. Baby, think about how great it is to feast on the Lord's word, to really get clarity in our minds, in our bodies, in our spirits. So I just wanted to share that part with you guys to let you know that fasting can be done. It can be done for however long the Lord um, leads you to do it. Um, like I said, I'm not a doctor, baby. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just telling, I'm here to tell you that it is a tool that you can use. Amen. Um, but also, so I took this from, I took a few notes from a video that I watched, um, that we don't really listen to our bodies anymore. Sometimes our bodies are telling us to fast. And if the Holy Spirit abides in us, that's something that the Holy Spirit is probably telling us sometimes. And we're ignoring the Holy Spirit. Um, I have had several moments where I fasted. And my body has felt better afterwards. And I don't know if the Lord was heading off diseases or not. There's a lot of different things that um, the Lord may be using my body for, and I'm not sure of it. But there's it's scientifically proven that fasting can head off certain diseases. Um, a lot of people that go in for different addictions, not just food, but different addictions, they have them go on a fast of things so they can get rid of all of that stuff that um, they've been addicted to. So we don't listen to our bodies anymore. So start listening to your body this year. Seeing what the Holy Spirit is saying. Listen to the unctions of the Holy Spirit this year. Um, I want to read this because I thought this was pretty cool. Um, this came from that doctor that I'm going to link below. We were um, Paleolithic beings um, two and a half million years ago, only eating meat, veggies, and drinking lots of water. Then agriculture took over 12,000 years ago and our food changed and our um, genetics couldn't keep up. In the last 200 years, we've become industrialized eating processed foods. So when you think about processed foods, baby, listen to me. Processed foods, it's not something that our body can really digest. It's not something our body can break down. It's not something that our body is really used to or was made for, which is why my biblical um, eating video that I made, a lot of those things that are listed in that list are not um, something that we eat now. Like nobody was eating egos back in the day, okay? <laughs> nobody was eating all of this processed stuff that we eat now. No Hot Pockets, no Tostitos. People were not eating that type of stuff back in the day. And I honestly believe that's why a lot of us are sick now. And one way through fasting um, allows us to kind of alleviate our body of those different processed foods and gives us kind of a, um, a newness, if I could say. It almost gives us like a full new body. Um, I've heard this doctor say it gives us almost like a full new body um, and a different way for us to be going forward. Um, one thing I also thought was cool that he said, he said our body is made to fast and feast. So our, your body is made to fast. So don't discount the thought that, oh, I could fast or, oh, I can't fast because if I fast, um, this, this, this may happen. I'm telling you, consult your doctor. If you can fast, please go ahead and do so. Um, the Lord could be having something waiting for you that can be hidden during that fast. Um, I, I just, your body is made for it. We can all do it. Um, I really firmly believe that I am not a doctor. I'm saying this again. I'm sorry. I have to keep saying this, but I don't want anyone thinking I'm giving medical advice because I am not. This is just, um, the spiritual walk that I'm on that I'm sharing. And I know that fasting really does help and work. Um, and then so this, the doctor that I follow, he talks a lot about insulin resistance and all those type of things. I have PCOS myself. Um, a lot of doctors have told me not to fast because of the sugar highs and the lows and the insulin resistance and all of that type of stuff. They've told me not to fast 
because they're worried about the sugar spikes that will happen when I actually do eat. But, excuse me, sorry. But a lot of the times when I'm fasting, I feel great. I feel really good. That could be also because I'm partnering with praying. I don't know. But I know that um, this doctor is saying when you fast at least once a day, you will be more insulin sensitive. And with my PCOS, being insulin sensitive is something I need because I have insulin resistance. So that's definitely something I'm going to be looking deeper into this year. Um, not only just just finding out what the Lord's strategy is, but actually listening to what my body needs so that I can be a good vessel and be able to be used by the Lord. Like I really want to be able to take care of my temple this year in the best way possible. Not just working out. All of that stuff is great. Eating great. That's great. Um, but fasting, I want to really uh, keep bringing that into my life. Um, this is also just one of the things he was saying. When you're fasting, you do pee a lot because there is no glucose made to make sure uh there is no glucose so make sure you drink a lot of water so when you're fasting um you do pee a lot because there's no glucose so you definitely got to keep up with your water um he gave this little tip um in his video and he was saying if you do get a headache drink some water with a little bit of um himalayan pink salt because it has uh, some vitamins in it that'll help you out. Also, um, that's something I'm looking to try to see how that works for me. And I'll let you guys know when I start actually doing that. Um, there's a lot of benefits to fasting. Um, I just looked these up online. <sighs> One way spiritually is you really get to feel the Lord. You really get all distractions out of the way and you fully can hear the Lord and understand what the Lord is saying because it also does something to our brain as well. I have a note on that somewhere, but I can't find it at this moment. But it does something to our brain. Take a look and look that up online. When you're fasting, it does something to your brain. It creates some type of clarity in our brain to help us function better and focus better um, because what we're eating and what we're consuming, it also affects our microbiome. Um, it also creates dopamine, all those type of things. It does affect us when we're eating. So when you're not eating, you're, you're taking all of that stuff away and your mind is getting more clear and, you know, your conscious is in your mind as well. And your unconscious is in your mind as well. And I just think of the fact that if we're clearing out our mind of all of the junk and, um, things that we consume, we can really be in tune with the Lord and actually hear him in our mind. Like, isn't that cool? That would be so amazing. So look into it. But anyway, um, there are scientific benefits. These are the scientific benefits of fasting. It increases um, focus. I just said that. It increases focus. It's weight loss. Um, it heals digestion problems. It reduces inflammation. Um, it makes growth hormones go up, it boosts the immune system, it slows down aging, it increases insulin um, sensitivity. Baby, fasting scientifically is great. You partner that up with Jesus, with prayer and fasting, baby, we could be some unstoppable beings out here, okay? We are healthy on the inside and then going to spread the gospel on the outside, baby, what? Huh? Okay? better come up here and get y'all one of these what's that salvation huh y'all better come up here and get y'all one of these but anywho i want to kind of bring some scripture into all of this um i want to make sure that i'm bringing scripture into all of this so um in psalms 35 13 this talks about david um where he humbled himself before the lord um, you can definitely also read Second Samuel. It gives you a little bit more um, context as to what exactly is happening, why he's fasting and all of that. So not Second Samuel, First Samuel, the 24th chapter. It gives you a lot more understanding as to why he's fasting in this particular moment. Um, but OK, so I'm going to start at verse 11. Um, false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. 
They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. So he fasted to humble himself before the Lord. So that's one way of us getting spiritual benefits of fasting. We can humble ourselves and humbling yourself before the Lord. We're making ourselves low before the Lord. We're humbling our plans. We're humbling our thoughts. We're humbling our things unto the Lord so he can reveal to us what he has for us. Because a lot of times we're trying to make things happen. We're trying to do things. We're trying to move. We're trying to do this. I got plans to do this. I got plans. Okay, that's great. What is the Lord saying? Because if you don't got the Lord backing you up on stuff, baby, you traveling in some dangerous waters. You could definitely hurt yourself. You could get yourself messed up. You can mess up other people. You can mess up your legacy, all of that type of stuff. So one way is us being humble before the Lord. Um, also, Matthew 4. This, I love Matthew 4. Let me tell you why I love Matthew 4. To me, this gives us the strategy that we need during our fast. To me, this makes so much sense as to why we have to know scripture, why we have to be prayerful while we're fasting, why we have to be spending time with the Lord while we're fasting, because the enemy is going to come, okay? This man is going to be on his way to us. Spiritual warfare is going to happen. And I want you to not get discouraged when spiritual warfare does happen when you're fasting, because Sometimes that means some stuff is working. Sometimes that means the enemies are the enemy is getting mad. Sometimes that means them demons is rising up. That can mean so many different things. But the fact that the Lord is with us, huh? Emmanuel is with us, huh? He is with us. But the reason why I say that he gives a strategy on how to do this is because this is when uh, Jesus went into the wilderness to be uh, tempted by the devil. But he was led up by the Spirit. What did I say before? The spirit could be giving us an unction to fast, to go out and do things. We just, but we got to start listening to our bodies. We got to start listening, getting in tune with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I would read this entire thing, but baby, I know y'all got a Bible. So we just not going to do that, but I'm just going to give you like the gist. So, um, I'll read this first part. So Matthew 4. Three, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made into bread. But he answered and said, it is written, throwing scripture at the devil, throw it at him, Jesus. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is... The entire time they're going back and forth. If you read um, Matthew chapter four, they're going back and forth. Um, and the enemy is the devil basically is trying to get him to, you know, just in this all, you know, just go and do what you got to do, because this ain't this ain't going to work out like you think. Anyway, go ahead and end this. Go ahead and do this. I don't know why I got so ghetto right there. I don't know. Anyway, but um this is just basically the enemy and, and Jesus going back and forth. And Jesus is constantly saying, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. He was telling him, hey amen, go ahead and um, throw, yourself, uh, throw yourself off this thing. Throw yourself off this little cliff. He like, you should not test God. So while you're fasting, I, I work in corporate America. When I'm fasting, baby, it's rough. Because they be having all the food days. It's always somebody's birthday. Somebody bringing in donuts, cupcakes. It's always going to be something to distract you or make you fall from your fast. But it is humbling yourself before the Lord and also putting your belly under submission while you're fasting. There was a time I had to do that myself and it actually worked. I was like, somebody brought in some donuts or some cookies or something. Something that I like. And I was fasting and I was like, Lord, 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 you are with me. Lord, you are my father. I just said a quick little prayer to myself and I submit my body unto you. I submit this unto you. I submit this craving unto you. And I drank a little bit of water. And after that prayer, baby, that thing was gone. I didn't even have the urge to go and get it. 
That was one of my successful days of fasting. I literally brought the Lord in with me while I was fasting. The thing that we struggle with sometimes, we're trying to just fast and just do it by the book and just, just read and just, that's it. But he wants relationship while we're fasting. He's trying to build intimacy with us while we're fasting. Okay. This is something that he wants of us. So definitely be reading your word while you're fasting so that you can have um, your uh, shield of faith to, you know, get all those fiery darts. Huh? Amen. But um, that's that's basically all I have. I have a little bit more, but we're running kind of close. We're running kind of over time, and I don't want to go too far. I don't want to be intentional with our time. But I definitely suggest that you do fast this year. I think it's a great thing. I think it's something that um, the Lord would definitely use to blow your mind. I think it's something that builds intimacy with the Lord. I think when you partner prayer and fasting, it is something that... Um, the Lord is pleased with. It is something that truly builds relationship. Think about what prayer is. Prayer is our communication with the Lord. So if we're humbling ourselves before the Lord and we're also talking to him, you will definitely see what he has to say back to you and see what he has for you. It could also be a form of protection. It could head off some diseases. There's so many different benefits for fasting. It could heal your body from fasting. There's so many different things out there. So um, I definitely encourage you to, and I just pray that all is well, and I pray that things continue to go well, and I just pray that as you fast, um, that you will also taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you all for watching this video. Um, keep God first, and you won't be last. Bye.